what we're going to do is we're going to ask my good friend Mark Lomas why he moved to Santa Barbara, what is going on in Santa Barbara right now, and why would someone want to come and buy a house from him. Um, and what we're going to be doing is starting a show called The Power of Jim. Are we ready? All right, but that would mean that we would have to be named Jim. Okay, okay. I'm Jim, and you're Very Jim. Good. Okay, I guess that's that. That's going to work. We're going to infuse the power of Mark with the power of Jim, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the right. power of Jim one or two. Who knows? The power of Jim. Ooh. Hi, this is Jim T. Chong, the walk star. You are watching the power of Jim. We are at Workvine. 209 and uh, this is the first time we've interviewed this uh, from from here and I'm really excited because a lot of things happen in Tracy what happens in Tracy stays in Tracy oh that's a whole different city altogether but um, uh, you know work Ryan 209 is uh, an incredible place about 10,000 square feet and I thought we would give everyone an experience and I love being in here alone pretty much because of the pandemic but things are starting to come on back but this is Jim T Chong the walk star I'm along with Jim Meyer from Remax Gold, and we have our very special guest from Santa Barbara, Mark Lomas. Give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Mark, you're a, a very successful realtor who was up in the Bay Area for, for many years. You moved to Santa Barbara. Thank you for joining us. Why Santa Barbara? Well, Jim, I thought there might be one more big adventure after living in the Bay Area for about 35 years, um, in Marin County in particular. And as you know, we both lived on the Tiburon Peninsula. But um, as you know, I have a background in history of surfing. And I have surfed up and down this California coast for the last 40 years, and including Hawaii. And Santa Barbara offers one of the best surf breaks on the entire coast, Rincon, which is called the Queen of the Coast. But what does this have to do with real estate? Nothing. Well, sure. But it's, 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 it, it was it's one of the original pulls for coming down here because uh, with a little bit of a background in surfing and skateboarding, there's a lot of history here. But back to your question. U.S. News and World Report a couple of years ago came out with Santa Barbara being possibly the best place in the entire United States to live because of its weather. We have an average temperature of 72 degrees, 365 days a year. Sometimes it gets well into the 90s. Every now and then it'll clock out over 100 degrees, but um, minimal fog, great weather. And in fact, if you are not a fan of uh, good weather and blue skies, it gets kind of boringly nice here. Right. So I didn't even really, I mean, I've been to Santa Barbara many times. My, my sister lives down there, of course. And um, I didn't even realize that it's, that the weather is that uh, great. Uh, I, I don't usually think about the weather, but I guess if I was there 365 days of the year, I know that. Uh, so uh, what's, wife, what's odd about Santa yeah. Barbara that people should be aware of is every coastal community in California faces west. Santa Barbara is on an, the arc of a curve. It faces south. Oh, my God. So, when you get up in the morning, the sun is gonna come up on your left if you're facing the ocean. And if you're facing the ocean at night, it's gonna go off and set on your right-hand side. And that has a cause and effect because as you know, with feng shui, you want Southern exposure. It's the only town on the entire coast that is, gets Southern exposure 24 seven. And you're making wow. us all jealous, Jim. That and you should be question. jealous. That's wait a right. second. Wait a second. Wait, wait, Jim. Jim. What? Let me check this out. Linda, have you ever heard of Santa Barbara? Yeah, I think 
but I think pretty oh, much everyone you said she's from Santa Barbara. Okay. Are you telling me Santa Barbara is a better place to live than Sacramento, California or Tracy, California? Uh, well, you know what they say about Tracy, California. What's the difference between Tracy and yogurt? What? Yogurt has culture. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I apologize. That one should be edited out and left on the cutting board. No, no. You know what? That's okay. That's okay. We, I'm we kidding. Like I'm play. kidding. I've, uh, our cats are from Stockton. We have two Maine Coon cats. Uh, we got them in Stockton. And... Uh, I have been to Sacramento more times than I can tell you. And other than the blistering hot summers, um, Sacramento is a great town. Yeah. Well, oh. you know, you know, Sacramento is a great area. You know, this area of Central Valley is uh, pretty cool. And, but, you know, I, I have to give it to you. If it's rated one of the best places to live, um, it's pretty nice. And, you know, I, I've seen the beaches out there. They have sunny beaches all over and uh, really just uh, it's a great place to live I mean the weather oh my gosh it get you know what you've done is you've given us a taste of heaven Mark so I appreciate that <laughs> well the curious thing between here in the Bay Area is if it's 75 and uh, or if it's 70 degrees in San Francisco it's 80 here we're always like just 10 degrees more than the Bay Area that's amazing. And we're, we're only a five, six hour drive, as Jim knows. So it's also kind of like Tahoe. People come down here for the weekend. Yeah, I'm in Fairfield. It takes me six hours to get to my sister's house. So uh, th now this is interesting because if somebody wants to sell their house in Fairfield, California, where it was 100 degrees uh, a couple of days ago, uh, how, 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 what's the temperature been like this week? Uh, the temperature this week uh, started out in the high 70s, and today uh, we had a high of 70 degrees. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So it, we've had in the 90s. Jim, it was in the 60s today. I'm not sure how I could stand it. Wait, wait, wait. I, Mark, I Mark, Mark were you, were you, wait, were you speaking to me, Jim, or that Jim? Um, exactly. The way you said that, it almost came out like, are you speaking to me, Jim, or fat Jim? You know, this is what it's all about, the power of Jim. We, we, you know, you have to understand, English is my second language. Oh, my accent is starting to come back. <laughs> all right. Mark is talking to both of us. Do not feel neglected, my friend. Uh, okay. but, so if somebody wanted to sell their house in, in Fairfield or Tracy. I'm looking like, at Jim Chong, but I'm listening to you. <laughs> Okay, good. It seems like I focus on the computer. Well, what's uh, my what's eye a starter contact? home in Santa Barbara going to go for right now? <laughs> say, say, a, say a, a two bedroom condo. What, what, what could you get? How much would you pay? Well, this is interesting because I have a friend up in Marin County in Mill Valley who has a friend who's looking for property up there. You can get a very nice condominium in Carpinteria or Goleta for from anywhere between the high 300s to maybe 600,000. And that's kind of the entry level. But you can get not only a nice two bedroom, two bath for anywhere between four and 600,000, you can get that in a nice neighborhood. And what Jim knows, Jim from, not from Tracy. Jim with uh, the name tag. Jim with the name tag. Jim okay, with uh, Sam's glasses. I'm just near um, Sacramento and I'm in Tracy right now. Yes. Even, hey, hey, Jim, even, not in Tracy. Okay, yeah. go ahead. When I lived in Marin County, there were some neighborhoods that you might not go into. And in our business, to even to suggest that a neighborhood is a lesser neighborhood could be construed as redlining, which cool. we're not allowed to do in our business. And I applaud that and appreciate that that's an aspect of us as professionals. But there are some areas here in Santa Barbara that people would think, well, you know, that's the low end of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That these neighborhoods driving through them, you would consider them up in Marin a good neighborhood because you've got a seven, eight hundred thousand dollar house uh, that somebody's poured a bunch of money into it. And even the lesser neighborhoods here aren't bad neighborhoods. And the school districts here. Uh, one of the reasons people move here, it's a great family community, and the schools are mostly excellent. There's one school district here that may have 
not the best numbers, but it's also in an area that lends towards people of a lower income. And with that comes a school that maybe is not getting uh, the resources that maybe it could, even though it's probably better than a lot of the poorer schools in uh, Marin or the Bay Area. So if you're looking for a good place to raise your family, good schools, good weather, the natives are friendly. But another aspect of Santa Barbara is it's a very small population. There's an old line, which is Santa Barbara is a big name, but in reality, it's a small town. And right now with the pandemic, we have all the colleges have been vacated. Um, driving around here, there's no traffic, no cars. You can go to Trader Joe's and get toilet paper and wipes. And if there's any place I could recommend to ride out a pandemic or where you'd want to be in a pandemic, uh, this is literally has been paradise, except for the sheltering in. Very good. Um, so are you showing any real estate these days? Yeah. Um, I got a call on a property today. It already has an offer with a backup coming in. Uh, the listing agent has another in this complex coming on the market. And uh, how I got caught up in, in an aggressive marketplace during a pandemic, I have no idea. I would say this, here's the um, hard numbers. The market in Santa Barbara is down 26%. Sales pending roughly were down 25%. But uh, for things in the bread and butter under a million dollars, uh, we're seeing a lot of activity, but it's all happening virtually as we are doing this on Zoom. Um, pretty much that's how people are seeing a property for the first time. Then if I meet somebody at the property, I have to have them sign what we call a PEAD form, PEAD. They could have come up with a better name, but that's how the letters line up. Right. Anyway, somebody has to sign this and basically it's acknowledging that they're taking all the risk on upon themselves, entering the house and leaving the house. And at the same time, we're gonna go in with mask on, I'll be wearing gloves and I'll go in with a jar of wipes. And when I leave, I'll be wiping down as much as I can to um, as best I can um, do this uh, responsibly and safely. Well, yeah. you know, let me ask you this. Over in Santa Barbara right now, you know, you gave us a little bit of a bird's eye view. Thank you so much. How is inventory out there? Um, how hard is it to get a home in Santa Barbara? When the pandemic hit, everybody pulled their listings because they didn't want to sit on the market indefinitely and have that inadvertently um, come back and hurt them. There's something in my thinking that I think is very important that went into effect May 1st. Are you familiar with the clear cooperation um, rules that have been enacted by the National Association of Realtors? Uh, I'm supposed to, yeah. And I know they've got a lot of uh, addendums, et cetera, uh, disclosures, but go ahead. Well, um, this will not speak well of our profession in the past, but right now NAR, um, after doing extensive surveys, has found out that pocket listings and off-market listings mm -hmm. um, have been a problem. And the problem is, is from the surveys they've done, they've learned that the last people to hear about pocket listings or listings that are offline, that are just some agent has for themselves and they're not exposing it to the marketplace. The last people to hear about these listings are people of color. And right. one, one of the things right. we yeah. do as professionals is we're, we are open to all people, um, race, color, creed, sexual, gender, whatever. We work for everybody. And this has been a horrific problem within our um, industry and it became illegal January 1st and enacted and enforced as of um, May 1st. Mm -hmm. So that theoretically, every uh, realtor association in California, theoretically, uh, they're not calling it what they've been calling it originally, they're calling it clear cooperation, which means that if you even get a pocket listing, you have to notify the MLS and have it appear as coming soon within 24 hours, or you may risk losing your license or having- And it's so stupid that agents do this, uh, keep these 
supposed, you know, pocket listings, whatever you want to call them, it hurts the seller. And it, it and, and Jim can tell us a story, which he might not want to because there's a lawsuit involved, but he was just telling me about these, this poor little old lady. These people came to her at her home at 10 o'clock at night during the pandemic and her, had her sign an agreement to sell her house. And then she said she wanted to back out and now it's all ugly, but you're right, is that they illegally uh, were keeping it off the market and keeping it hidden from everybody just to basically rip off a little old lady. So you're right. Well, I keep seeing on the MLS that this information was inputted for statistical purposes only. Oh, right. And I had a buyer for that that would have paid more. Yeah, yeah. And so it, uh, this it, is something it, NAR you know, should yeah. have done, should have done 30 years ago. Right. And also um, this became on Marth Martin Luther King's birthday this year. I read the whole law that's being enacted uh -huh. and wished it happened sooner. Yeah. Right. And, and it's going to help a, a lot of buyers and the sellers who basically are being conned into to not marketing their property properly by, by uh, greedy realtors. And the studies have showed that in the end, these listings sell for less than they would have if they had been exposed to an open market. Right, like a for sale by owner where they, they sell for less and, and the, the owner thinks that they save money and they save nothing. And can I share a little secret I take with me whenever I talk to a for sale by owner that you guys can use? Go and you might want to edit this because your competitors will pick up on this too. Oh, nobody watches the show, so don't worry about it. Well, then we're good. Yeah. Oftentimes, but it depends on what your situation is financially, and you definitely want to talk to a tax expert before you make this decision. Oftentimes, the commission is deductible. Well... Why not, would you it's always, not it's, hire an agent when basically oh, oh yeah, it's I not going to cost you any money? Oh, okay. Yeah. You are somebody with a lot of money, a lot of properties. It may not work for you. And now I'm reading my internet connection is unstable. That's probably Cox communication here in Santa Barbara. That's the only bad thing I can tell you about Santa Barbara is the um, internet providers. And they weren't great up in the Bay areas either. It could be much better. So, it, but when you're surfing, you don't need the internet. So I guess it's okay. Well, I surf the internet. Oh, very good. Wow, what a quick mind. Jim, I'm surfing the internet. I'm not in Santa Barbara, but <laughs> no, but you know. And I hear the surfs up in Tracy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, that's good. I, I, heard, I heard you had rain for a couple of days and uh, I heard the surf was up in Tracy. The problem is it's uh, 10 feet and it's downtown. But I'm oh, good. Da -da -da. Well, you know, um, you know, let me ask you this. Uh, you've kind of shared a little bit about how the pandemic has affected things in, in Santa Barbara. What, what do you foresee over the next upcoming months for real estate itself? Well, to be honest, I feel that right now we're down to politics. Jim and I are in a very friendly way on opposite side of the same equation. But my thinking is that uh, what appears to be happening is we're doing herd immunity, which is let the chips fall where they may. We're not doing proper testing or tracing. Places are opening up, not based on matrix, based upon the idea that the cure is worse than the disease. And so for me, probably spend 20, 30 minutes a day watching the news and, you know, not being thrilled with what I see going on. Um, I'm not sure if we really are going to do anything other than just let this play out and see what happens. That's beautiful. If we could have set that to music, it would have been even better. So, um, actually it wasn't that good with or without music. No, it was horrible, but, um, Mark Lomas, we well, we miss you up here in the north, and we're we're happy that you're very successful in Santa Barbara. And uh, uh, Jim, do you have any parting uh, shots at uh, Mr. Lomas? 
<laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of something bad to say about, about, about this after the knock on Tracy, but um, in all sincerity, um, Santa Barbara is, is just a really spectacular uh, place. And so, um, you know, it seems, you know, right now the economy has been able to hold itself pretty well over there. <clears throat> and so I know that uh, Santa Barbara itself, what, what's the population in Santa Barbara? Roughly. Well, it's probably around 125,000, but when all the colleges are full, it could be 160,000. Right. Well, Marin, Marin County is uh, 330,000. Wow. So we're a much larger area of land, but we're probably one third the population, but we're also isolated in that we're kind of like an island on the coast we're two hours north of LA, six hours south of San Francisco, and it's the central coast. And I think most people think of Northern, of California as Northern and Southern California. There's a huge central coast and a whole different lifestyle here. Mm -hmm. And it's quiet, rural. And one of the things that we've seen regarding real estate is people from San Francisco and LA who are sheltered in buying homes sight unseen. One family from San Francisco had been locked in their apartment in the city. They had bought an expensive estate here in Montecito. And what they did was they had the house entirely prepped, clean, all their furniture move in. And the very next day they drove down from San Francisco, moved into the house and let their kids out of the car who were able to play outdoors in their yard for the first time in two months. Wow. And did they like Pandemic the house? real estate. Did they like the house? <laughs> oh, they loved it. They're buying another one. Okay, yeah. good, good. That's kind of like a crusty. I'm a realtor. Yeah, yeah that's that's great a lifestyle dream. there in Santa Barbara. Well, uh, you know, tell but, us but truth, truthfully, San Santa Barbara has been negatively impacted like everybody yeah. else. Yeah. There are a lot of restaurants here. There are a lot of people who work in restaurants. What's going to happen to that industry? Is that going away? It will not. It will come back. Now, you were talking about the real estate going down 25%. That Those are the num the sales, not the price. Has, has the price pretty much stayed uh, high or gone up a little bit? Well, there are a lot of people with money out looking for properties that might want a haircut. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we got there. This thing's only lasted a couple of months. Um, I think, depending on what happens with the economy in the next couple of months, may determine how this market plays out, because I don't think anyone knows what's going to happen next. Right. I mean, nationwide, the prices have gone up 7% in the last year. Uh, the number of sales have gone up, uh, gone down something like 20%. But the the people like you were talking about Santa Barbara, everywhere is the same. Uh, around 20% of the people took their houses off the market. So you had the demand went down and the, and the inventory went down. So the prices still kept going up. But uh, where I am in Fairfield, the price has gone up 3% in the last year, which is pretty much, you know, at inflation. Uh, but it's, we don't see, that there's a crash and, I, and you're right is that it's only been a couple months i don't think that people are going to go get houses at 50 cents on the dollar anytime soon no but i also see people in our business saying oh we're going to have a great third quarter we're going to have a great fourth quarter and i appreciate the aspirational uh, optimism but i don't know what's going yeah. to happen and I, I i i basically my job is to not only listen but really listen, because I think if we really listen to what our buyers want and we relate to them from that perspective and uh, be willing to roll the dice and walk away from any transaction you get into. I saw in Inman News that some of the transactions that have gone down during this pandemic have blown up. And there's some uh, people out there that are not really comfortable with this whole situation, but I think there's underlying anxiety just from the pandemic. And as best we can as professionals, um, listen to people and try as well as we can to uh, 
perform in the capacity that they would expect from someone in our business. Exactly. Or maybe even have the, a higher expectation. Now the surf, are you still able to go out and surf uh, in the pandemic? Has that changed at all? Um, people are, but we've been asked to shy away. Okay, do you listen to Gavin Newsom or do you listen to your heart? I listen to him from time to time and I think he is uh, brilliant. I, I think really, and, um, I don't, I, I disagree completely. No, I know, um, but I also think he and Como are the only people doing the metrics thing. Okay, well, yeah. And I have just received a call from my partner and apparently I need to be someplace else. So gentlemen, I apologize, I have to wrap this All up. All right, say hi to your partner for us. Um, all right, Jim, let's wrap it up. This has been the power of Jim. Oh, we're seeing her phone number on there. Okay, everybody's going to call her. Well, one, thank you for all tuning in. Thank you for giving us a taste of Santa Barbara. This is Jim Teacher on the Walkstar along with... Jim Meyer from Remax Gold and... Mark Lomas, Santa Barbara Real Estate. And you've been watching... The, the Power of Jim. Have a good Bye-bye. That's the power of Jim. Got the power of G.